welcome to Sage and Stone Homestead. It's kind of loud in the barn right now. <laughs> if you haven't met me yet, my name is Heather. My husband Levi and myself and our four kids live on about nine acres in southwestern Kentucky where we do a lot of things. The dairy goats is just one of those things and right now we are in the busy season. During the busy season, I am beekeeping, I am gardening, and I am milking, and that's a lot of effort on my arms. I already have one bad elbow, and I bought this utterly easy milker as a kind of last ditch effort to help save my elbow. I really, really enjoy hand milking. I feel like hand milking really is the best way to empty the udder. So I bought this thing to help me out with that. There are some things that I like about it. There are some things I don't like about it. And I hope that my genuine review of this product is super helpful for you. I want you to know up front that I bought this with my own money and I was not paid for my opinion. So right now I am milking eight dairy goats. Most of them are Nigerian dwarves and don't take very much to milk out, but some of them are a little bit bigger and take a little bit more effort on my arm. Okay, so just here's Margie. Margie is one of my heaviest producers as far as milk goes. She's got triplets, and this is the first time, to my knowledge, that Margie's ever had triplets, and it's really making her udder very hard after our 12-hour hold, and it makes starting milking kind of difficult. Her teeth kind of point outward instead of downwards, and it's a lot easier for me to get the milk out of her and into the pail if her udder is less full, and that's where this comes in. So we've got her udder clean. I'm gonna get the first couple squirts of milk out of the teat because those will contain the most bacteria. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. So the Utterly Easy Milker comes with two separate inflations. There's this one that's a little bit bigger. And then I'll show you the other one that is a little bit smaller that I would use with some of my Nigerian dwarves. Margie here is an Alpine cross. Her teeth are a little bit bigger, so she's gonna use the larger inflation. And it's actually pretty easy to change them out if I wanted to. It just pops off the bottle like so. And I could put the other one straight on, but we're gonna stick with this one. Ready to go. So it might be a little bit difficult to see what's going on here, but there is a steady stream of milk coming out of the teat down into the bottle. So you have to prime it a little bit, get some suction going at first, but once you have a good suction going and you've got a good flow, you can take a rest with your hand. So I like this milker for the fact that I can express milk out of the udder with relatively minimal effort. My one major complaint is that it takes forever. It takes a really long time to get the milk out. This has probably been on for at least two minutes and I have a cup of milk and it might sound kind of impressive, but it's really not. Margie has very large orifices and she can really dump the milk out quite quickly into the pail when she's being hand milked. This is gonna take a really long time and she's not gonna have the patience for it. So I know that I need to pull this off and hand milk her before she's done eating. Oh, and if you missed it there, all I did to release the suction was kind of place my thumb along the base of the tea and break the suction. I didn't wanna just yank it right off, that would hurt her tea. But that's what we've gotten and it's been quite a long time. Now it's time to switch to hand milking. I think there's enough in here to where it will stand up. But that's another complaint I have. If you don't have enough milk in the can here in order for it to stand up, it won't. It'll absolutely fall over and everything will fall out because it's just open to the inside there. Margie is normally not this way when we milk. Um, I recently changed the feed on my girls and they don't like it as much. This is just a normal goat pellet, but they like the stuff with molasses in it. And so this is a good opportunity to show you what I do so that I can milk my girls in good timing. So I could just kind of work with her like this, put my, keep my hand on her udder until she stands and then keep milking. But this does take kind of a long time. As I mentioned before, I have a lot going on and I can't spend all day in the milking barn, so I am gonna harness her up. So what I have here is just a regular leash. I've got it looped inside of itself and I'm gonna put one of her legs in it. Take this side of the leash, put it around her other leg here. 
and then put the clip back through and I've got a little butt harness so she can't sit down. And then I'm just gonna take this clip here and clip it to this fencing and she won't be able to lay down. Just like that. See, she's trying to lay down and she can't, which is good. because even when she's full, she has really great teat placement. She has really great teat length and she's a very easy to hand milk. She still has her little baby on her so we're not really seeing her full capacity but she still gives quite a lot. She doesn't hurt my arm at all to milk, which is awesome. This here is Schwendli. She's my Kiko Nubian, and she has a big old udder with kind of less than ideally placed teats. They touch her leg. You can't even see them on camera right now. It's over here, and it makes it really hard to milk her when she's super full. So I'm gonna milk her most of the way using this utterly easy milker, and she responds to it much better than Margie does. The milk flows a lot faster. Plus, Schwenny takes forever to eat, so in this situation, the time is there to be able to give to the smoker. the milk has really stopped flowing at this point. You can probably tell that I've been pumping every so often and that's because as the milk fills the vessel, the vacuum pressure slows down and so you do have to uh, continually pump in order to make the pressure great enough to express the milk. So to release the pressure, I'm just gonna put my thumb right here where the teat goes into the milker. <laughs> you heard it that time. That didn't hurt her. She kicked just because it's friendly. But this is what I managed to get out with the pump. And now I've got to move on to the other side, which is a little bit difficult in my situation just because I have a wall right here. There are a few different sized bottles that come with this milker. And depending on the height of your goat and I guess the depth of her udder, you may want to switch out the bottles. So there's that large one that I've been using. And then there's this one, and there's actually one that's even smaller than this if you need. The important part is to not allow the milk to fill pretty much into the neck at all. At that point, you really risk the milk just spilling out the top. not as much out of that side. It's taking quite a lot of pumping just to get a little tiny bit out. So I'm gonna see what she'll give me with hand milking. I have at least released enough of the milk where I can get a really good grip on her teats and on her udder and hopefully have an easier time milking. She's essentially done eating. So she's done with me at the moment. She's got a lot of milk in her udder still that she's not really willing to let go of. That's okay, she still has both of her babies. I just need to let them out of the stall. Okay. Hi, honey. It's not your turn yet. Just a couple weeks. I can't wait. So overall, I think the concept of the utterly easy milker is a good thing. I think that it opens up milking accessibility to a lot of people that may not otherwise have that option. My arm is really killing me this morning. And the, the action that I do with milking is quite different than the action that it takes 
to pump that machine. So I've never milked a cow, but from what I hear, milking a cow is a lot different than milking a goat. When you milk a goat, you really have to uh, pinch off the milk and guide it into the teat and out. So if you can see here, we've got her udder and up in the udder is where all the milk is. And obviously down through the teat is where we want the milk to come out. So with goats, you really have to pinch kind of above the teat to get that teat to inflate with milk. And you sort of pinch that off with your thumb and your forefinger and use your other fingers to express that milk out. So we've got our thumb way up here. It's not down here on the teat. It's actually way up on the udder where the udder meets the teat. We're gonna pinch the milk down from the udder into the teat, inflate that teat right up and use our other fingers to squirt that out. And it just takes a lot of finger work where that pump milker, it's really just uh, like grip, like grip, grip, grip. Milking does this and that really does work these tendons in it. It hurts me quite a lot lately. Are you ready to be done? So it's really good for something like that. Problem being is I don't feel like it empties the udder fully. So while you could get a decent amount of milk out, I think you'd be getting less than the goat's capacity or less than they're able to give. And consequently, you could have less milk over time and they may dry up a little bit faster than they would had you been able to empty out their udder all the way. So a lot of people will do exactly what I did with those types of milkers and that might be what they're really designed for. I don't feel like it's marketed in a way that would have you understanding that you have to follow up with hand milking or another form of expression after milking in order to empty the udder. But overall, I think hand milking in general just is faster. Once you get the hang of it, it's a lot easier. But until you get the hand of hand milking, that kind of thing really can help you learn how to milk your goat effectively while giving you a little bit of security in the fact that if you are kind of bad at hand milking, as I think we all are when we first start hand milking, you've at least got something that's gonna help you give your dough some relief. Back when I was first learning how to hand milk, I actually had a leftover human breast pump that I would use and I found it super helpful for the reasons that I find that utterly easy milker super helpful. It helps relieve the pressure off of a really full udder so that you can get a better grip on it. And if you really can't get the hang of milking, that human breast pump is gonna work just fine for most goats. I'd say especially a Nigerian dwarf type goat, if the teats get real big, the human, the one that's designed for humans, the human breast pump isn't gonna work as effectively. And it was actually Margie. When I first bought Margie, that first goat that we milked today, she wouldn't respond to the human breast pump. So when I bought her, I bought her in milk with none of her kids. So I had no choice but to really learn how to hand milk in order to give her some relief. And after I learned really how to hand milk and do it effectively, I, I much prefer it over anything else. But having some kind of hand pump really did help me in the beginning and it gave me, woo, the confidence and the ability to have the patience to try to learn how to hand milk. There's a lot that goes into the ease of milking of any dairy animal. And you'll find that maybe some operations that really focus on machine milking, they might not care as much about getting super long teats. I don't think super long teats are anything that gets any kind of show points. I think it's more about teat placement, but I could be wrong. But you'll find that a lot of breeders who hand milk themselves, their goal is an udder that is easy to milk by hand. And so we bought our La Manchas, our last set of La Manchas that we purchased from a breeder who hand milks herself. And she spends a lot of time and focus in getting an easy to milk udder. And those girls will be freshening for us very, very soon. In the eight different girls that I am milking, I have different techniques that I need to use with each individual goat in order to maximize the amount of milk that I'm getting out of that particular udder with that particular doe's anatomy. Some does really hold back their milk. Other does just can't wait to get all of the milk out of their udder and get some relief. 
Some does have a large orifice or opening to their teat and the milk just falls right out. Other does may have a narrower orifice and it takes a lot more work to get milk out of those teats. Some udders are really soft while other udders are really just kind of meaty and it's hard to get a lot of milk out of those udders. There's a lot that goes into it and I think having options when it comes to milking is overall a really good thing. I just thought of something too. There's also the possibility that maybe you are sick or incapacitated in some way and maybe you're the only person in your household that knows how to milk a goat. That's kind of how it is here. Um, a milker like that makes it really easy for anybody with limited experience to be able to get at least something out of the dough and give her relief and prevent her from getting mastitis until you are back on your feet and able to milk. So it's a good idea to have something like that. Another tip too, which I think is more of like a personal mental health tip than anything else. Um, save your easiest to milk goats for last. You want to be able to end on a good note for yourself so that you don't resent coming down to the milking barn. That's what I do. I milk my hardest girls first, get them out of the way, and then I get to end on a good note with some of my goats that are really easy to milk. So you remember earlier when I had to strap up Margie's back end in order to get her to not lay down? I used to have to do that with Pepper here. She was horrible. She's actually horrible every year that she freshens. It's like she forgets how to be a decent milk goat. But now I don't even have to put her feet in hobbles. So that's not a forever thing that you have to do. It's just something that is a possibility if you just have to get the job done. They will eventually learn that they can't lay down. <laughs> helpful, um, a little bit informative. I hope it helps give you a little bit more confidence when it comes to milking your own goats. Learning how to milk goats is hard for everyone. It's hard for you, it's hard for the goat. Once you get into a really good routine, it is well worth that learning curve. Having said that, if you are still with me and you have an electric pump milker, I finally just did my taxes. We are getting a little bit of a return and I think I'd like to make an investment as far as an electric pump milker. I want to try to save my elbow. I've got a lot of work to do around this farm and the last thing I wanna do is overwork myself to a point where I can't really work well at all. So if you have any recommendations on a pump milker, I've been looking at the Simple Pulse machine and um, I, I'm really not aware of any others, but hopefully goat specific or at least two-teated animal specific would be awesome. I'd really love to hear your thoughts.